And couscous are delicious. But I, just, I don't think that uh, there's, I don't think there's a, I don't know. I don't feel like a lot of people know how to cook them. I am a huge fan of one pot meals. I love the simplicity behind it. I love the ability to be able to sear a protein in a cast iron to develop this like beautiful golden brown crust on the outside of the meat or fish or whatever you're cooking, creating a, a pan sauce with your vegetables, or your grains, or your starches. In honor of that, today I'm going to do a seared salmon. So this is an Atlantic wild caught king salmon. I'm going to do it with a Israeli couscous. They are like this larger version of the miniature couscous, and I like to cook them in the style of risotto. I have a little bit of pre-minced shallot, scallion, parsley, I'm gonna deglaze with white wine. I have one of my kitchen staples, my garlic confit or my roasted garlic. Thyme, bay leaf, rosemary. New ingredient that I don't work with a whole lot, but that I absolutely love the flavor of, which is lemongrass. I have my fish that has been filleted and skinned. If you haven't seen, I have a video out there to show you how to do that. It's a very simple process. So my fish, I like to make sure it's nice and dry. Salt both sides. I have a neutral cooking oil. This is a grape seed oil. I'm gonna add it to preheated enameled cast iron over medium heat. That sizzle and pop is exactly what I'm kind of looking for here. So I'm gonna go with my presentation side down first. A little bit of light pressure. This helps ensure that the fish is going to get a nice even sear all the way around. So when I cook fish, I only like to sear one side. And I like to sear it until like the point where it's like golden brown and thick and crusty and delicious but then I leave the other side unseared so you get like all of these different layers and textures in the fish. When I'm searing any type of protein, especially fish, it'll tell you when it's ready to flip. It'll just kind of release itself from the bottom of the pan here. Add just a little pat of butter. This is the butter brown. It helps that outside layer caramelize a little bit. So once I'm seared, I go ahead, flip these back onto the plate that I started with. I've got what I call like that fawn, that deliciousness in the bottom of that pan. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my shallots. The goal here is to kind of sweat the shallots out a little bit, to soften them. I'm not trying to put too much color on them. Then we'll go ahead and go in with my couscous, start to toast those. So in order to like really release some of these essential oils in the lemongrass and kind of like activate the flavor, you've gotta bruise it. Good way to do it is go ahead and take the back of a knife. Just kind of whack at it a little bit. I can smell it, it smells so delicious. This is gonna go in whole. And goes, good scoop of roasted garlic. Another pat of butter. Couscous are toasted. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna deglaze with a little bit of white wine. This is like a white table wine. It's good enough to drink, it's good enough to cook with. At this point, I can go in with all of my fresh herbs. I'm just gonna take a piece of thyme, kind of tie everything together here. So what these are gonna do is they're gonna absorb your, the liquid as we go, and they're gonna start to swell and like quadruple in size by the end of this. A bit of salt. As we continue the cooking process, I have a little bit of homemade vegetable stock. And I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time, enough to cover. Bring it to a boil, reduce it down again as the couscous absorb it. I'll do this process a few times. These cook pretty fast like risotto. Traditional risotto with arborio rice will take you know 45 minutes to an hour to cook, stirring pretty constantly. And this is a much faster process. So I'm stirring every so often. It doesn't have to be a constant thing. All right, now that my pan's about dry, I'm gonna go ahead, same deal as before. In with the stock to cover. Bring her back to a boil, reduce her down. So I'm about at the end of my fourth round of stock here. My couscous are literally like quadrupled in size. A good way to check to see if they're tender or done cooking is just kind of pull a few out of the pan. Give them a taste. They should just like be kind of like al dente, like a normal pasta would be. I like to go ahead and go back in with my salmon. And as this continues to boil and finish cooking, it cooks my salmon through, leaving my crispy sear on top. All right, 
I check my salmon. I like to cook my salmon to about medium. A handy dandy cake tester here, works on seafood also. Go ahead, bottom of the lip, perfectly warm. Pull these out of the pan. Allow them to rest for just a moment. Finish reducing down this stock. It's towards the end of the process here, the couscous, they do want to start to stick on you a little bit. So this is the only time that you have to really kind of stir it constantly. My liquid's pretty much absorbed. Turn off my heat, and I just have a few final ingredients. My fresh chopped flat leaf parsley, green onion, a scallion. Season with a little bit of salt. Fresh cracked pepper. Lemon zest. Put in a little juice. Great way to do it is if you actually squeeze the lemon cut side up, the seeds won't fall in. Just a little acidity for brightness. Stir all this deliciousness together. Go right in your bowl. What I love about the couscous is you have the ability to impart so much flavor into this risotto style dish in such a short amount of time. You know, start to finish to the table, 15 to 20 minutes. Easy to do on a work night or really any time. So much flavor, deliciousness. From my kitchen to yours, I hope you enjoy. Please tune in for some more great content coming your way soon. Thanks guys, take care. Thanks for tuning in today. If you're enjoying our series, please feel free to hit subscribe below so you can be the first in the loop to join us each week as we release new content. Sear or <laughs> salt both sides. <laughs>